All right, good afternoon, everybody. Well, let's go ahead and begin the session. Everybody, I'd like to introduce Sebastian Bell. Sebastian is the CEO and co-founder of Localize, a Japanese startup building an analytics service for brick and mortar stores. He is working with Python for the past six years with a focus on REST and real-time APIs, machine language, machine learning, excuse me, and connecting things to the internet. Take it away, Sebastian. Thank you. So uh, if you have referred to your guide and you think it's Python for humans, uh, so I must uh, unfortunately uh, tell you it's not the case, but I still managed to compensate and rename my presentation Cassandra for humans, so we are going to see if it's match <laughs> in the same way as Kenneth would have done it. So I've been working in Tokyo for the last uh, four years, uh, first for Orange and now for my own companies but basically doing the same things and you, working with Cassandra for the roughly last three years. So why Cassandra? So first because actually we have been, uh, for all these years I've been uh, connecting more and more things to the internet like sensors, temperature sensors, uh, power meters, gateways, phones, and in each of these cases we needed to log everything from the sensor data to you know, log of the uh, actually uh, uh, systems. And we found that Cassandra was a perfect match for this use case, so we've been using it. What's Cassandra? So the origin of Cassandra comes from uh, actually part an article from Google on Bigtable, the data store they use uh, uh, there, and uh, another article from Amazon. It has been uh, um, used by Facebook and then released uh, under the Apache uh, license in 2009. So what is it? It's a distributed column-based uh, k-value store. So I think I feel it's the most accurate definition for it. Then people tend to add on a lot of words and those words on top of it, and we'll see a bit what it's, what uh, there is behind them. And finally, what is interesting uh, to do this? Why it is interesting to do this presentation today is that they really, uh, the release of the 2.0 of Cassandra has been done uh, like one week ago. So yeah, it's, it's getting more mature. So what's the, a, quick, uh, a quick overview of the architectures of uh, Cassandra. So basically you have nodes. Nodes is uh, one instance of, uh, of Cassandra server, uh, organized as clusters. And these clusters are, uh, so are, are on a ring. They talk to each other uh, with a protocol called gossip. Some of these nodes are actually seeds, which actually, uh, when new nodes come into the, into the ring, they uh, organize it. And finally, you have uh, this niche concept, which is actually a kind of meta, uh, metadata for each of the nodes, which tells, which tells if a node is in one data center or another, and that's used afterwards for replications. So other features that are interesting to understand before starting with Cassandra is the uh, idea of partitioner. So partitioner is an algorithm that uh, uh, determine if, uh, where the data are um, dispatched on the nodes, so depending on the snitch, and, and for instance. Uh, then um, you, you have to know that you can use different data replication strategy. Uh, so if you have one, one data center, the simple strategy, which is the one that is often uh, uh, explained in the tutorials, is the one to go for. If you have a, more complicated uh, topologies, and you should go with a network topology strategy. And finally, compaction. So the way that, uh, uh, why uh, Cassandra has good performances is that every data that, co that comes in is first uh, put in memory, then uh, written in, into a, a log file, and finally compacted to the final file system, to the organized file systems. And so the compaction uh, concept is interesting to understand when you start to meet some uh, some problems. So what is actually the data model of Cassandra? So it's uh, basically they use the idea of key, key space, which is a table, uh, uh, which inside you can find column families. So column families are, are don't, don't have necessarily a, a, a schema. It can have a schema, it can have a, a semi, it can be semi-schema or, or uh, no schema at all. Uh, each of these uh, columns are identified by a row, and each of the, in each of the row you can have uh, columns or an, another um, nested 
level of data, which is uh, called inside Cassandra super colon and colon. So it's kind of, if you take the Python uh, representation of this, uh, of this data model, it comes uh, with, so, uh, 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 in each colon family, you have so rows which are identified by a key. Uh, then the colon uh, name, the, col the colon is identified by its colon name and its value. And finally, if you have one nested level, uh, in a, like one more nested level, you have this super column name and column name and value. So in, in, uh, in Cassandra, each, each uh, value or key is actually uh, a byte, well, is represented a byte in the database. And if you, uh, if you want to enforce some uh, data, uh, data types, you will just actually uh, marshal the, 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 your, your data into the bytes that will be stored in the database. This gives this give us uh, this interesting property to be able to have composite keys, either for the row key or for the uh, column name. So basically, a, a, a key can be uh, the concatenation of different uh, uh, data types. And we'll see that later, but it's useful for clustering and for uh, uh, ordering your data directly in the, in the, data, in the database. So how do you communicate with, uh, with Cassandra? So originally, there, were, uh, there was, uh, so since, until the version 0 0.7, I think, you could only uh, communicate with Swift. So Swift uh, is a you know, cross-language binary communication protocol uh, developed by Facebook and still used by uh, other famous tools like Hadoop or, or so forth, other big Java framework. But, uh, but Swift has some uh, disadvantage. It's not so, uh, it's not so uh, let's say, idiomatic uh, to you. To, or it's not very convenient. And you need, still need to learn a new API to use uh, uh, Cassandra. So from the 0 0.8, uh, the, the Cassandra developer teams decided to implement a new uh, query language inspired from, uh, from, SQ, from SQL, but not exactly SQL. And uh, like with the new latest version of Cassandra, Cassandra 2.0, you have this uh, Cassandra query language 3.1, which also, in, in addition to the string uh, queries uh, of SQL, also embed a native protocol, binary protocol, which makes uh, things like uh, lightweight trans transactions, or, uh, or triggers uh, possible. Okay, so so far we only discussed about Cassandra, but not at all about Python. So let's, let's uh, since we are at PyCon, maybe let's start to talk about Python and uh, and the merge with Cassandra. So as always with a new uh, new database, uh, new database technology, you have a lot of uh, possible drivers. Uh, some so the first of them uh, based on, on Swift, this first interface. The latest one uh, based on CQL uh, and the latest version of CQL. So the most famous uh, uh, library uh, to interface with Python is called Picasa. Uh, actually, uh, two weeks before, I would, uh, I would have thought I would make the presentation about Picasa and uh, do like many people already did, uh, which is a tutorial about Picasa. But I, I felt it's not so interesting because it's not going really uh, uh, to, the, to the future of, the, of, of Cassandra in the same direction as uh, Cassandra is going. And uh, like two weeks ago, uh, Datastax, which is uh, one of the make, main companies uh, uh, backing up uh, Cassandra, have released a Cassandra driver for Python, uh, which uses uh, this uh, latest uh, uh, CQ, CQL uh, uh, language, plus have other nice benefits I'm going to talk about. And so finally, I decided to uh, talk about uh, Cassandra driver instead of Picasa. Another reason for not talking about Picasa is that it's actually not planned to support Python 3 uh, anytime soon. One of the reasons for that is that the Swift library is, not, uh, is actually not uh, supporting Python 3 yet. And so, uh, and Picasa knows that it's, since it's not, uh, as I was saying, not looking at the, at the future of uh, Cassandra, although Swift interface will be uh, maintained and still remain backward compatible it's better to look at, uh, at the future. So Cassandra driver. Cassandra driver uh, has been released in August 2013. So it's designed for the SQL language. And it's supposed to be a replacement uh, for Picasa in the future, but it's still in beta. 
Right now, I think we are in 1.0 beta uh, 2 or RC2, something like that. So some of the things I'm going to present might not, be, uh, uh, not, not stay in the final release, although I think we are close to it. So what's CQL? So it's a kind of a denormalized SQL. So you have uh, some of the features, of course, you have with uh, uh, SQL, SQL, you don't, have them, you don't have them in SQL. But of course, you have other tools like Hadoop or uh, Storm or other uh, framework to, to do them. In a, uh, so they have no joins, no subqueries, no aggregation, limited order by. But, uh, but still, it's very useful. Let's start to see how we can create, uh, how, how we can use it with, uh, with this new uh, library. So uh, I, in, the, in the other driver, I was talking about a, a DB, DB API 2. So Python DB API 2 was actually already using a SQL, like they started from the SQL 2.0. And they also follow, uh, following uh, the PEP 271, which, uh, no, uh, standardize the way you access a database in Python. So basically, instead, here, instead of having a cluster, you would have DB. Instead of having session, you would have a cursor. But uh, from this point of view, uh, uh, DB API 2 and, and, uh, and this driver looks alike. But in also, DB API 2 is also using Swift, so that's and, and enforced to use, uh, I think, Twisted as a uh, even, even asynchronous uh, loop, which is not the case for this one, so I think that's why they decided to uh, go for this, uh, for this Python driver. So basically, you instance it with a cluster. So here, I assume we have a, a launch Cassandra locally, so the default would be uh, uh, like localhost and the port of Cassandra. You connect uh, your session, and you create a key space to uh, uh, so, which is like creating a database. Then you, by doing session set key space, you enforce to work only on this database, and you won't have to, uh, to append uh, the key space to all the commands you will do after. Then next, create a, a table, or actually colon family is a, is a, a synonym of, of table, but uh, to keep it more SQL, let's use table. And uh, for now, we are just doing the same as we do, I would do with SQL, so there, there is nothing interesting. Uh, so let's more talk about the cool features that bring uh, Py uh, Python uh, driver, the Cassandra driver. Uh, like, for example, prepare, sta prepare statement. So of course, you don't want to have to uh, write strings all the time. You want to be able to wrap them into functions. And that's why uh, the uh, Cassandra driver bring you uh, this uh, prepared statement uh, uh, methods. So you just uh, no, put a, a question mark instead of the values you want to bring. And uh, uh, Cassandra driver will prepare for you the, the, the function. You just have to wrap it then in your, in your, uh, in your library. So we can imagine that with, with this kind of uh, prepare statement, we can uh, easily do a, a, a nice uh, uh, ORM on top of uh, Python driver. Uh, one of them I didn't mention is called uh, uh, CAS engine, or yeah, SQL engine. It's one on top of DB API 2. So uh, we can imagine in the future many um, Many people will try to bring that also to not have to write SQL manually. Also, in my opinion, it's still very useful to do it. Uh, then another way to use prepare statement. Uh, here in the case where we want to, uh, to have a sequence. So we can use uh, the, the value sequence on the prepare statement uh, uh, query uh, uh, class. So in, in Picasa, in the, in the past, when you were uh, doing a, 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 a executing a query on the database, on uh, Cassandra, you were, you were getting back uh, ordered dict, so the same kind of dictionary I was showing you at the beginning. In, uh, in, uh, in, Cass in Cassandra driver, now you can uh, uh, over, uh, over, uh, overwrite the kind of factory you want the data to be brought back to you. So it can be, so uh, by default, it's uh, this tuple list. It can be also named tuple, uh, dictionary, or other dictionary like Picasa. So that's one uh, interesting feature to uh, 
depending on how you manipulate in your, in your backend uh, the data from Cassandra. Then many of the, of the driver I was showing you before have uh, enforced the use of one uh, asynchronous library or, not, or don't use one at all, like Picasa. Uh, so what, uh, uh, what um, Cassandra driver has been uh, built by, by thinking uh, asynchronous first, like every call is actually asynchronous. It's using, uh, by default, the async core library from Python, but you can over, uh, override it. Uh, so actually, when, you, when I was doing a, a execute uh, in the previous slides, it was actually just doing an execute asynchronous and getting the result right away. And, uh, but you can, of course, uh, uh, do it more uh, custom, customly and, uh, and uh, add callbacks for, uh, for the result or for errors to the, to the future object uh, provided you by execute async. So you can start to directly think on a, by, uh, without enforcing any library your, uh, your calls to the database. And that's also possible because you are using SQL3. Like SQL3 made uh, the asynchronous call possible. It was not possible before with Swift. So the asynchron uh, asynchronous library you can use are pluggable, as I was explaining. So for now, you only have uh, uh, libv and uh, asyncore uh, in, the, in the library, but they plan to uh, provide uh, uh, gevent, twisted, any, I guess, every... Uh, Famous asynchronous loop will be, uh, and libraries will be uh, brought in, into the driver in the end. So let's talk a bit more about what we learned uh, in our case. So connecting sensors to uh, to, uh, to the internet with Cassandra. So maybe one thing that is a bit uh, uh, a cornerstone when you when you come to Cassandra is that there are, you have two types of vocabulary. You have the one uh, for for, CQ, for CQL. The one I was showing you, and the one for, for Swift and the like documentation of Cassandra with uh, these super columns that I didn't talk about in the SQL and this kind of stuff. So that's one thing to sort out when you start with uh, Cassandra is to understand these two kind of vocabulary and the difference between uh, SQL and SQL. One, uh, I feel one, one shortcoming you often meet when you use Cassandra and you start to store a lot of things in one, in a, without thinking about your data model in, first, in the first place, is that you actually have a row size limit. It's supposed to be a very wide row database, but still you have a row size. You can't, like what we were doing at the beginning, take, a, take one row for one sensor, and then put all the data, uh, maybe uh, with a one second uh, 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 frequency, uh, and, and, and just expect everything to go fine. So. At some point, if you do that, you realize that uh, Cassandra will uh, start to uh, uh, time out when you try to communicate with it, and that's because your row are too big, and when, they, when it tries to load them in memory, it just can't, and it hang out. So what you have to do in that case, you have two strategies. One is uh, row sharding. So basically, you, make, you, you build a new, I'm going to detail that just after, but you build uh, row, key, uh, row keys uh, with a, uh, you distribute on several row keys the same data, or you can uh, use uh, time to leave features on Cassandra if your data uh, uh, can be uh, destroyed you know, after some time, uh, as they are not so important. Like, uh, like in our case, we will just keep the aggregate value on one hour for the temperature sensor because it doesn't make any sense to keep one second accuracy of a temperature. Uh, finally, one tool we didn't have when we started uh, but uh, but we were happy to find when we started to deploy, deploy several uh, uh, clusters is the OpCenter uh, um, tool from Datastax. So you have a community edition that is uh, that actually is quite useful. We never tried uh, yet the paid version, but uh, because we are uh, so far happy with the uh, uh, free one. But it lets you visualize all your uh, clusters on uh, one. Uh, web interface, uh, see all the metrics from it, see the memory uh, utilization and all this stuff. So um, yeah, I would advise to start with it because it also automatically installs uh, Cassandra uh, 
uh, database and the clusters you have, so it uh, makes the installation a lot easier. So to, to finish on, a, on our problem, I'm just going to talk about some uh, last features that we find the most useful in Cassandra. Is so this uh, clusterization of data uh, when you have too many of them in one row. So let's take our, our, uh, our temperature sensor. So the uh, naive implementation would be to have uh, uh, so a primary key uh, containing so the sensor ID uh, as a row key, also called the partition key, and then the timestamp as a as a key of the of the column. So the column name in my preview in, in the dictionary I was showing before, and it's called in the in the Cassandra language the clustering key. So that's fine until your row becomes too big. And so what you can really easily do is that organize your temperature rows day by day. And in that case, you will actually have a composite partition key. So your, your parti partition key has actually two parts. It has the sensor ID, it has the date of the, like the, date of the, of the day of your temperature by day uh, uh, table. And then finally, the same uh, timestamp for the, for the uh, column name. And this organized by uh, in the descending order, so in the reverse order. So when you make a query of the 50 last temperature, you get uh, you get uh, you get them directly without having to reverse the table. So that would be it. So if you have any questions, I'm ready to answer. I guess with SQL it was not really uh, for humans as uh, Kenneth would have meant, but. Uh, there is now one step more to do is to create a library on top of a, of a Python driver to make it really for humans and having a nice idiomatic way to, to use it. Does anybody have any questions for Sebastian? Um, couldn't you just have it all as separate rows? Like in a traditional like relational database, I'd probably have a table that represented, and then every single row would represent one second. Is Cassandra like, you shouldn't design it that way, or? Well, then uh, uh, if you, you, you would put one timestamp by row, by uh, row key, and, by, and then the value, what do you mean? Yeah, I mean, I was just asking, is that, would that be very bad to do in Cassandra? Well, it won't be very bad, but you would lose the information to which sensor does this uh, uh, measurements belongs to. How, how do you then cluster by sensor each of the? Oh, okay. I thought there's like a parent. I'm not parent, like the. Um... The column family. Yeah. yeah. So you could do that, but then you would have a, a lot of column families, and now it's not uh, recommended to to multiply your column families. Column families is more like a template for your data model. So, for instance, uh, measurements, uh, current family, mm -hmm. and then you should still organize them by uh, sensors, like data streams, and finally, inside of this data stream, which, uh, so one other way you could do is that each, in each row key, you would put uh, you, the ID of the sensor and then the timestamp. Okay, yeah. In a composite it, way, but it, it's not recommended. It, because it looks quite a lot like SQL, right? So it kind of lends you to thinking more like SQL, which I guess you shouldn't really do, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, okay. Exactly, yes, yes. So, 
we thought that for the for this kind of use case where you imagine your data exactly as a, a, a as a white columns, it would make sense. So storing them as a as a document conceptually it was not uh, uh, um, matching. We felt our use case. Then we didn't do any uh, uh, performance uh, comparison. We just uh, you know, look at the internet and saw that everyone was with our use case was uh, kind of using Cassandra. Um, and that's how we decided finally. It's not very uh, scientific, but. Uh. All right, anybody else? Don't be shy. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, Sebastian. Everybody, uh, let's give Sebastian a hand. Have uh, another.